Leanne here from Backroad Buddies and the video we want to share with you today is about our echo modifications. So if you've been following us for a while you know we switched rigs for season five. So we switched from a camper van, a Van Duet camper van to a Winnebago Echo. Now we've been traveling for four seasons now we know what we like to travel with, we know like how we like to travel, so we made a lot of modifications. I mean, you would think that you buy a brand new RV, there isn't much to do, but um, we actually made quite a few modifications. So if you just are interested in a few of the modifications instead of sitting through the whole video, or you can watch it in batches you don't have to watch the whole thing once but if you look in the description below there's a timeline so you can jump right to the modifications that you're interested in now most of these aren't rocket science they're usually pretty simple but hopefully they'll give you ideas uh, in your own rig and you're like oh I've been trying to figure out how to solve that issue um, so hopefully this will be helpful for you so let's begin and these are in no particular order Mod 1 is to remove the tailgate package, which is the exterior kitchen, and install a shelf. So this was an option we didn't really want on our Echo, but because we took one that was already available, we kind of had to figure out what options we were willing to accept and which ones we could um, that were a no-go. So we figured we could easily remove this, and it was pretty easy to remove because we wanted that extra storage. We didn't want that outdoor kitchen. So actually we replaced some of it with a blackstone griddle. So <laughs> we still are able to cook outside. We just didn't want that uh, tailgate package that came with the Echo. So there were a couple of issues with removing it. In the back wall, there's a couple rectangular cutouts um, and here, why don't I just go show you. So this is the compartment where the tailgate package was, or the um, outdoor kitchen. Let's hook this up here. So as you can see, we turned this into a storage area. Now we actually custom fit everything in here. We knew what we wanted to get fit in here. so. We test fitted everything. We actually built a prototype shelf first. So we knew exactly what the dimensions are, how high we wanted it. So the Blackstone griddle isn't in here right now, but it fits right on here. This is a board we built um, and it has little feet on it. And that's for when we put the Blackstone griddle like on a picnic table or on our plastic uh, camping table so it protects it from the heat. That's got a good good thick coat of poly on it. And then we use this strap to hold the black stone in place so it doesn't move around on us. It's screwed into the floor and screwed into the shelf up above. Now this shelf is made out of plywood and this is what's called T-Track or 80-20. And as you can see in the back, there's kind of a little lip there that we filled up with some wood. Now, when we removed the uh, outdoor kitchen, well, here I can probably show you since it's not holding up here, that they had cut out these holes for the, because the drawer slides that the outdoor kitchen rode on needed that little extra space so for now we just have tape over it but as you can see that's not going to hold up very well so we'll replace that with something a little more permanent like a piece of rubber or something so we haven't done that yet and we also noticed we added an aluminum angle here to the shelf and that's to keep things from sliding around and we also didn't take the shelf all the way to the edge so that we can put some taller items in here like this stool. Mod two is to remove the entertainment 
center and create a little storage cubby. So this was another one where the Echo that we bought came with an option that we didn't really want. They have the TV and sound bar up above the cab. So when you're sitting here, you kind of have to look up at it, which means the only place to view it is having both people sit in this bench seat and you're kind of looking up. Um, this was kind of a similar setup to what we had in the camper van and we ended up not liking it and removing the TV in there as well because it's just not a comfortable place to view it. Plus we mainly watch stuff from our laptops and iPad anyway so we wanted to remove that. Now when we removed the TV and the sound bar the headliner had some holes in it where the wires came through so initially we weren't going to do a storage cubby but we're like well we either have to cover up these little all these holes in the headliner or make the hole much bigger and just have a little storage cubby so that's what we did so this is the um, headliner that we actually cut this hole out so it actually looks very similar to the two cubbies that already existed next to it and then there's a whole bunch of insulation and wires exposed back here so this is ABS plastic that we put in and so these side panels were already here and we kind of cut out these plastic pieces and glued them in with ABS cement. If you notice, we had to make a seam down the center and that was so we could manipulate the pieces in and out of this opening and get that all into place. And it's kind of a weird angle. So it comes straight up here, comes at an angle and then another angle yet near the top. So it was a little tricky to kind of get everything to fit properly. It was a lot of test fitting and getting that to work. Now on the bottom here, behind here, we put another aluminum angle and we adhered that to the floor here. This was existing and um, with VHB tape, so that gave it something support here to attach these bottom pieces to. Now, if you actually, you probably can't see that on camera. This is, it's not really secured against anything in the back there, so but it seems to hold up pretty well. And then just to finish off the look and to keep things from falling out, we got this stretch net from Organized Obi. Now it's a little different than the ones that are over here, but we had to get one that was long enough. Now the tricky part was getting this attached because um, it's hard to get a screwdriver in here. So we noticed back here, I don't know if it shows up on the camera here, there was already an existing piece of plastic here. And so what we did was we cut out two layers of ABS plastic the same size, glued those together, attached the net to it while it was outside of the cubby, and then glued that whole plastic piece to the existing plastic piece. And then we were able to reuse some of these screws on the bottom here to screw the bottom of the net in. And that actually worked out pretty well. Now, it's not very big, but it's big enough so we could put things like spare water bottles in there, um, maybe a purse, and the other thing we're planning on putting up here is like our reusable shopping bags. It's hard to do one-handed. <laughs> But yeah, so you can, you can fit a few items in there, and that works out pretty nice. Mod 3 is install a WeBoost cell amplifying system. Now, we had done this on our camper van, and we really liked it. The company we, we use is WeBoost, but there's a couple others out there as well. And... So it involves three components, really. There's an antenna that you want, like up on your roof, that receives the existing cell signal. And then it routes that signal into a box, which is an amplifier, to boost that signal stronger. And then there's an 
a second antenna that you put inside the ring that rig that rebroadcasts the cell signal. So there's no Wi-Fi involved. No, it's just basically giving you a stronger cell signal. Now it won't make a signal out of nothing. So if you have no cell service, then the WeBoost isn't going to do you any good. But if you have a weak signal and you need it a little stronger in order to, you know, stream something on the internet or upload a video or something, you can get that little extra boost. Now, the install in the Echo was actually simpler than what we did in the camper van because camper van we had to cut a hole in the roof and run the line and run it behind the headliner. In the Echo it's much simpler and we actually followed what James at the Fit RV did for his install. So the Echo comes with, a, let me get the name of this thing right, it comes with a King Jack antenna. And since we aren't planning on watching television, we didn't really want the King Jack antenna. So if you detach that, now you have a cable that runs from the roof all the way up to the front cab, which initially was for that antenna. And then James actually um, 3D printed a part that would replace that antenna and allows you to connect right into that antenna cable. So we were able to mount the outside antenna on the roof rack, the luggage rack, and then connect in and we had that part 3D printed from James and was able to route that and so the cable's already routed so we didn't have to do any cable routing inside the the vehicle and then attach our amplifier and antenna up here in the front cubby. Now James actually routed the indoor antenna wire all the way over to the left side because he's figured that's where he is but we just left it in the right cubby and that made it much simpler. This is the front cubby and the antenna cable used to come right here but we replaced that with the outlet here so this is, or it's a cigarette 12 volt and uh, USB ports there and then up on the top shelf is where we actually have the amplifier so we were able to reroute that antenna wire and it have it come out here at the top shelf and we have the the amplifier velcroed to the shelf and then this is the internal antenna that rebroadcasts that cell signal. And then you notice we actually have another device here. This is a Verizon Jetpack hotspot. So it'll take the amplified signal, since it's sitting right here, and then create a, a hotspot that we can run our devices off of. So yeah, we do that because uh, sometimes we can get a better signal with Verizon than we can with AT&T, which is what our phones are. Mod 4 is install a ceiling fan cover. Now, the this is going to be a long story for a simple little thing, but the there's a kind of a cover or curtain that goes in the front cab that's supposed to give you some privacy and kind of a little not really insulated but to block out the windows in the cab. We didn't really care for that. It kind of sagged. It wasn't real good seal and so we ended up going to Van Made Gear and getting shades for the windshield and the two side windows in the cab. Well they also make a ceiling fan cover so you can ins and it's insulated so it insulates that opening where your ceiling fan is so when you're not using the fan you can actually keep it covered and keep the heat in or the heat out depending on whether it's hot or cold outside when you're not using the fan. Now, let's see if I can get a good shot here. So this is the cover and the install is really simple. The cover has magnets in it so you actually have to um, I think it was pull this frame down and you actually put um, 
Now I don't remember which is which. If it's metal in the... One of them's metal, one of them's magnet. So you just install this um, magnetic ring in there for the cover to stick to. And then it... The magnets just hold it in place and they're pretty strong. Mod 5 is uh, spray T9 into all the outdoor compartment locks to make them work a little better. We also sprayed the steps so they'll move in and out a little smoother. Um, of course what prompted us to do this was we thought we had a real issue with those compartment locks. It turned out we actually have two different key sets. So we're still working on getting that resolved. So that's kind of what prompted it, but it does really help. It really makes those locks work much smoother than they did before. And this will actually prevent, um, it's waterproof, it um, protects against rust and corrosion, so it'll keep those locks working well for a long time. Mod 6 is install a clothesline in the bathroom. So you want some place to be able to dry out wet clothing, whether it's a towel or, you know, jackets or, you know, you've been out hiking or something. And finding a place to hang everything out <laughs> inside of a small vehicle is a little tricky sometimes. I mean, sometimes we'll use the back of the front seats to hang jackets and stuff, but it's nice to have a clothesline as well. So let me show you. I mean, it's a pretty standard little clothesline. So we mounted this one on this side, this end of it, and it's just like a wire that pulls out and then hooks in to this other part of it. Um, we attached this side with VHB tape and hopefully that'll hold, especially if you start um, putting some heavier things on there. We'll see how that holds up. And then this one, we just used the screws that came with the bracket. However, we would recommend using a little shorter screws because we thought it would be okay, but it just poked through the wall just a little bit, almost not enough to even catch on, but yeah, a little shorter of a screw would have been better. Mod 7 is Resute removed the molly panels on the two gear garage doors and then we um, in its place on one of the doors we put a stretch net. And the reason we did that is we wanted that space that everything we have in there is rather tight and those molly panels stick out about an inch or two away and then you're hanging stuff on top of that so it's not a very efficient use of space so we wanted those extra couple inches, so we removed the molly panels and we actually sold them so they aren't going to waste. And then that stretch net, we're able to store things in and it's right up flush with the door and takes up less space. So here's the doors um, to the gear garage. No, so, I mean, we still have the holes from where the molly panel attached, but we attached this stretch net here and we're able to put our bike helmets in here and they sit nice and flush up against the door and take up less space than those molly panels. Mod 8 is install a thermometer with uh, three remote sensors. Now this came about because of one of the first things we noticed when we turned on the furnace in, in here on our shakedown trip back from the dealer in California. We notice it would tell us what temperature we set the furnace to, but it wouldn't tell us what the current temperature was to know how long it was going to take to warm up or, you know, whether things were actually working and warming up. And it's also nice to know what the outside temperature is and various compartments. So what we did was we actually installed a thermometer and it's actually, what do you call that? That measures humidity, hygrometer. There's the word I'm looking for. Um, so we know the temperature and humidity. And the three sensors we installed were, well, the one is sitting right above the, here, I'll just show, show you. So here's the thermometer and a hygrometer. So this is the temperature and humidity inside the coach right now. 
and then we have three sensors. The one we installed in the gear garage, so we know whether the thing's in there, what temperature they're staying at. This one is in the water compartment, so we can be aware if things get bad in there. And then this one, well, right now, the sensor's right here because I'm changing the batteries, but we have that mounted underneath the coach near the rear wheel on the passenger side. So that would give us the outside temperature and humidity. And, oh, it's probably because it's an enclosed case. That's interesting because it should be 64 and 36 and it is 68 and 87. Good to know. So, and it's also that we've had this installed for three months, I think, and we've had to change the batteries already. So hopefully that is just an anomaly and that won't be an issue that we have to do that often. Mod 9 is install a tire pressure monitoring system or what's known as a TPMS. Now this is good. Yes, the Ford Transit will let you know when your tire pressures get extremely low. But usually you want to know before things go really bad. So a third-party TPMS usually gives you uh, pressure readings and temperature readings of all your tires. So we made sure we got one that has um, transmitters for six tires since there's six tires on this vehicle. And the, the monitor, here I'll show you. Here we are in the cab. We mounted this right above the rear view mirror, it just with Velcro. Um, and right now it's showing us the tire pressure in all six tires. And you just push a button on top and it'll give you the temperature of all six tires at once. So we kind of like that. The one we had before would cycle around between, well, we only had four tires in our camper van, but it would cycle around to each tire. And this one we can see it all at once. How this works is there are um, sensors on your valve stem of your tire and they're actually transmitting the information back to the monitor. Mod 10 is install propane tank level sensors. Now we oh. used what's called Mopika and what they are is they're two sensors and they just attach to the bottom of each of your tanks with magnets. And then you log in to an app on your phone. I can bring it up here. And this is, you can see what it looks like there. And you can see it shows both tanks and what their levels are. So as you can tell, we like information, but it's always nice to know these things before they become an issue instead of, you know, you're relying on the propane for heat and your heat kicks off and you're trying to figure out why you're like, oh, we ran out of propane. So it's nice to know these things before they become an issue. Mod 11 is mount two waste baskets under the sink in the bathroom. Finding a place for waste baskets in an RV or a camper van is always kind of tricky because you're limited on space. And so the best place we found for that to be is underneath the sink in the bathroom because that seemed like unused space. And we found these two bins at the container store that seemed to fit nicely under there. So here they are. Um, we wanted two bins because we like to do recycling when we can. So this one is for garbage and this one is for recyclables. And these are actually mounted on the wall. So they're up off the floor and they just pull, I'll see if I can do this now. They just pull off. See, it just kind of just sits on top of that. So hopefully that'll keep them from falling over when we're on the road. Cause you don't want that either. And we'll see how much of a pain that is to remove and replace those every time we want to use the shower, because that's the only time they're really in the way. Mod 12 is install motion detector lights. So there's a few places we wanted to use these. One was in the bathroom, and the other is in several of the exterior 
exterior compartments. So in the bathroom, it's the bathroom light. Well, let's go show you. So in the bathroom, part of the issue we're trying to solve is the bathroom light is just not very convenient. It's here outside on the other side of the door. So what do you do? You open the door and you're like, oh, I forgot to turn the light on. You have to close the door, switch the light. So instead we installed, if you notice it turned on, this motion detector light underneath this cabinet. And what's nice is this is dimmable. If you notice, this is a soft light, so it's not real bright in here. But that's nice for nighttime when you have to get up in the middle of the night. For one, it's easier on the person coming into the bathroom because it's not so harsh on your eyes after you've been in the dark. And it's also less likely to wake up the other person, especially if you're trying to fumble around and find the light switch <laughs> in the dark. The other places we installed it were several of these exterior compartments. This is the compartment with what had the tailgate package in it. And so we have a light up there for the top shelf and that one needs to be recharged. So these are rechargeable and that one isn't coming on. But we have two in here, so we'll have to do that before we hit the road. And they recharge by plugging them into a uh, USB. And the other places we installed them was in the, this is normally the generator bay, which we're using as storage since we didn't get the generator. And uh, let's see if it, that one needs recharging as well. Doesn't seem to be turning off. Put that to our list of things to do before we hit the road. And then there's one up there. And this is where our batteries are and that pump. Now we don't store anything in here, but you know, if it's nighttime and we have to debug an issue, either electrical or with the plumbing, we might need to get in here and having a light nice and handy. Of course, we need to charge them for it to be handy. The final light we installed is actually here in the propane compartment. And this one also needs to be recharged. Now we installed these just with Velcro so then we can go um, charge those. I guess it's actually USB-C that they recharge with. Mod 13 is rigged up a way to secure our e-bikes in the gear garage. So we traded in our hybrid bikes this year for Rad e-bikes. They're the Rad Expand 5 and that's mainly so they will fit in that gear garage in the back because we wanted them inside and not out on the back on a hitch. So we actually followed um, a lot of ideas that another person on the Facebook group did. And I'll show you what that looks like. So this is the design of what we use to secure things. So these are bicycle wheel chocks and then we attach them to these l tracks. So we bought additional l track screwed it into the floor here, and used that to attach these chocks, because that's what they're designed to attach to is l track which is the same as what comes with the Echo along the sides here. And then to kind of help guide the bike into there, we bought these aluminum channels. So our bike tires fit nice in there. And then you'll notice here, we actually had to cut down a piece of this edge along the shelf because our derailleur on our bike is right there and we want to make sure it didn't hit anything. And then the additional thing I'll show you once I get a bike in here is we use a ratchet strap that connects into 
the existing L track to tighten it down. Now here's the Rad Expand 5 e-bike that we bought. We have two of them. Now we also bought these quick release pedals because we need to make space in there so removing the pedals gives us a little more maneuvering room in there. We'll throw that in our little pannier bag there and then the next thing we do is fold these handlebars down. There's a release on here. And that folds down like that. And then some people use a ramp to get them up in there because these bikes are somewhat heavy. However, once you have the handlebars down, it won't roll on the back wheel very easily. So you gotta kinda lift it up anyway. But we found it's not too big of a deal because you're gonna just lift part of the weight till you get that front tire in. And then you just have to lift it up and it rolls right in. Into those wheel chocks down there. And then we can put our bags with our quick release pedals on the side here, hanging from the hull track. And our bike helmets fit nicely right in here. So then once it's in here, we take this ratchet strap, it's hooked into the L track on the one side. And we wrap it around the frame. Hook it into the L track on the other side. And then we tighten it up. Holds that pretty stable in there. Mod 14 is install a paper towel holder. Now this is kind of a little tricky figuring out where it should go. So this is the kitchen area which would make sense or the most logical sense of where to put your paper towel holder. This is a nice wall here but it's right above an open flame so that's a no-go. Here would be a nice spot too, but I knew that's where I wanted to put my spice rack. So that was out. So we actually put it up here above the door. Now for short people, this may be an issue, but for us tall people, we have no problem reaching this. Um, now the other issue is what type of paper towel holder to get. In an RV, you have to be concerned about this unrolling as you're driving down the road because there's going to be a lot of vibrations. So you want a ratchet type. Um, actually in our camper van we had our paper towel roller strung with a bungee cord up against a team track so it was nice and tight and didn't unroll there. But for here you want the ratchet type. You can hear it. And this is a, gives you a second advantage of you have a uh, one handed operation. So that makes it up nice as well. Mod 15 is installing everything keepers. These are nice for storing little things that you don't want to get lost like binder clips, pens and pencils, papers, you know if you have a few loose papers or your iPad or small things like that. Now we mounted three of them. So two of them we mounted underneath the cabinet in the dinette area. So we are expecting to put an iPad here and you know probably add some pens and pencils and we get little clips in here. And then we also installed a third one back here in the bedroom. 
turn some lights on. And this one. Oh, it's got a little sewing kit in it. I didn't realize that. Before. And we could use that to put our iPhones at night and charge them. Because we've got a little cords running down there. Mod 16 is build another pantry shelf and add a Velcro strap to one of the shelves. Now the pantry, this little pantry here behind me is a little odd shaped, so I'll show you what that looks like. Here's what Winnebago calls the pantry. And if you notice, I mean, you can see on the top, it's, it's an odd shape. And I actually test fitted what I wanted to put in here. I wanted to put heavy things in here because I was also gonna use this cabinet here as a pantry, but I didn't want too much weight in there. So things like canned goods and bottles of oils and, and uh, vinegars and things like that. And I quickly realized that Winnebago comes with two shelves, but I quickly realized I wanted three. So we just built one out of plywood, put a little contact, I think that's contact paper, put a little aluminum lip on it. And so we made that to fit. And then because I knew I travel with some, is that in there? I travel with some glass, but, well, some of them are plastic, but I have all these bottles of vinegars and oils and stuff. And I really don't want those falling over as we're traveling down the road because that would make a huge mess. So we added this little Velcro, Velcro strap, see if I can do this one handed, to make sure, because I can fit all those bottles on one shelf and kind of secure them in there with the Velcro, especially if I don't have, I don't have the shelf fully um, filled up for some reason. I can really secure those in there so they don't flop over when we're traveling. Mod 17 is to install a super slider underneath the rig. This is another one where we copied James at Fit RV. <laughs> we wanted to get that sewer hose out of the water compartment and like where do you want to store that thing? I mean yes it's intended to mainly be used for gray but since we bought the Americanizer from James also we can also use that to dump our cassette toilet into a regular RV dump and makes it a little easier. So there may be black water in that hose as well. So we wanted some place isolated from everything else. Now the super slider is a tube that kind of is adjustable so you can get it the right length and find a spot under the RV. So I'll show you where it's installed. So we installed the super slider basically the same place James did it's up underneath here here's the one end and it comes down here to the other end now there's supposed to be a door on here not quite sure what happened to the door but inside there is the uh, the sewer hose and the Americanizer that we keep in there so we got a another item we got to fix before we hit the road Mod 18 is remove the closet rods from the two wardrobe cabinets in the bedroom. I don't know why they consider, I mean, I guess in an RV you have short wardrobes, but I mean, of course, we're both tall people and there's nothing I would hang from a hanger that could fit in such a small cabinet. So those closet rods were one of the first things to go. We can use that storage space much more efficiently than hanging things on hangers. Yeah, here's the taller of the two wardrobes, but as you can see, I mean, the closet rod used to be across here, and once you put something on a hanger, you're not gonna fit much of anything in there. Mod 19 is to remove the wardrobe door and add a laundry hamper. Now the reason for this was, well now that we had the closet brought, we removed, we wanted to keep a laundry hamper in there. And a laundry hamper is something you're going to access, at least we are, probably multiple times a day. And we don't want a lot of extra rigmarole to either lift something up, open a door out, and because the laundry hamper we have really fills up that space, so you'd almost have to pull it out or tip it, put your stuff in. 
So we kind of wanted to minimize the pain there, so we removed the door. So all you have to do is tilt the basket out and throw your clothes in. Let me show you. So here is that uh, passenger side wardrobe, and we found a nice sized laundry hamper at Bed Bath & Beyond that fits nicely in that space. And it has a little liner. So now when removing the door, it just lets us throw stuff right in there very conveniently. And there's still room behind there to put some things. So the one thing that we got was actually this backpack laundry bag. And that fits nicely back in there. And we'll probably put some other things back there as well. But what that allows us to do is not, you're not always conveniently parked right next to a laundromat when you need to do laundry. And sometimes if we're set up at camp and there's a laundry at the campground, we'll walk our clothes over. Well, to walk this over there would be a pain in the butt. So having a backpack, we're hoping we can just lift the liner out, stuff it in the backpack, and then easily carry the clothes back and forth to the laundry. Mod 20 is to build a shelf in the driver's side wardrobe cabinet. So let me show you what that looks like. So this is the driver's side wardrobe. So you notice that this has a not as much space as the other one. And we designed the height of this shelf so we could fit this bin in. We're hoping to use this for like dirty shoes to contain the dirt and sand. And then use a little basket here for additional clothing space. And then we believe there's enough room in the front here. Notice we didn't build the shelf all the way out front. So we think we can get my laptop bag in here when we want to um, put it away and get it out of the way and out of sight. Mod 21 is to build a shelf in this overhead dinette cabinet. We test fitted things so we knew exactly what height we wanted to build the shelf so we can fit these bins underneath. We actually tested the tallest box. I don't know if it was a box of cereal, whatever. Things we typically take with us so we know what height we need to keep in here. And the plan for up here is light stuff, like all the breads and tortillas and chips, bags of chips. So it'll be light stuff. And that way we won't have to put those in bins because there's going to be nothing heavy up there to slide around and crush those things. Where in the camper van, we kept them in closed containers so they wouldn't get squished. Um, going along with that, I should have noticed in the... Um, in the wardrobe closet, the shelf is just uses just regular shelf pins. But this one we wanted to make sure doesn't come out. So this was little screwed in brackets. So it's held in there pretty well. So we have two on each side and one in the middle of the back. Now you notice we don't have a support in the middle here. We're thinking that'll be okay because we have nothing but light stuff up here. But if that becomes an issue, we might have to attached to this center post or something um, to give that a little extra support. Now what did catch us, I mean we were careful that when this closed, let me get some light in here so you can see. I don't know if I can keep that. So we thought we did a good job because we're like, oh we got to make sure we leave room for that hinge. But what we didn't realize is we were assuming it came up vertical when it was closed. Well, it turns out it actually angles back and hit our shelf. So the quick little solution was just to um, cut a little notch out of there. So now everything will close properly and close all the way. Mod 22 is build a shelf in the cabinet underneath the stove. So here's the cabinet. And again, we test fitted what we wanted to put in here. So we knew we wanted to get this stuck. 
of pans in here along with this dish pan and the electric tea kettle and then on the shelf up above we wanted to be able to fit an induction cooktop and along this right side we actually put a hand immersion blender hand immersion blender in there now if you notice we didn't use plywood for the shelf and that's because we had some things to work around it's kind of an odd shape there's a I don't know if you can see real well back in there. Get some light that, you know, there's like a corner you got to work around and some pipes and the filter. Um, we actually chose to use our friend from the camper van world, this 8020 or T Track. Now we moved this filter over one inch to give us a little more room. We probably would have liked to move it a little further back, but then you get into issues with the the lines leading in and out of it and we didn't want to mess with those but the 8020 gives you a nice structure so we can give it nice support without having the shelf going all the way across and then we if it's hard to see here but we actually use the ABS plastic for the shelf itself and that gave us more room because it's real thin it's thinner than the plywood and so it gave us more room and clearance so the induction cooktop you know fits perfectly on that shelf and uh, kind of goes in beside that corner that sticks out back there and just uh, really is a nice nice solution Mod 23 is installed bins on the doors, um, on the cabinet underneath the stove. So let me show you those. No, if you noticed when I was showing you the shelf under there, that we put these plastic bins on the doors and they're just held on with um, those Velcro strips. Now, this one is intended for like dish soap and, and scrub pads and kind of dish things there and then these two are intended for I think um, boxes of tea fit in there nicely but this was kind of a rather puzzle of a cabinet because we kind of had to coordinate the shelf with what we wanted down in there we had to get this bin up high enough so it cleared that other bin and cleared the tea kettle and that this is back far enough that there's room in there for everything and we thought we had worked everything out until we went to close this door so you see I cannot open and close the left door without having the right door open and because this was moved as far as it would go um, we'll just have to live with that until we can come up with another solution but it shouldn't be too bad we'll see how much that's a pain to always have to open the one door first so we'll see jury's still out on that one mod 24 is we turned some of the locks on the exterior compartment doors to be more consistent don't ask me why it seemed like they just randomly put them in different orientations now we only know how to rotate them 180 degrees and not 90 degrees, which would be a little nicer to get them all lined up the same, but they're more consistent than they were before. So I guess that's a plus. <laughs> Mod 25 is we added glow in the dark tape to the steps in the bedroom and to the above the entry door. Um, that was mainly we were hoping you don't always see those steps in the bedroom even though there's a little nightlight down there and so we just wanted to remind ourselves we don't want to end up twisting an ankle or something but we're not sure how much it'll be helpful because I think that glow-in-the-dark tape only lasts for a few hours so in the middle of the night is probably not going to be glowing anymore but we haven't really slept in here since we installed it so we don't really know how long that glow in the dark will last. So the jury's still out on that one too. So here's that glow in the dark tape. Um, we're just hoping to make those steps a little more visible so we don't
trip ourselves up. And then the other one is on the entry door here. I'm not sure how much good that'll do, but I'm six, well, we're both six foot tall, but it seems to be I'm the only one that's really clobbered my head on this thing twice. And it's a rather thin piece of metal. So that really kind of hurts when you, you know, you're just hopping up into the van and hit your head on that. Not good. Now, we could put some kind of cushion on there, but it's not really easy to do because it'll interfere with the door, right? The door sits flush on there. So not really sure what the solution is on that because it's not like I hit it this way. I hit it coming up from the bottom. Mod 26 is we removed the little hook that was on the door to the water compartment and added a organizer to put items in there. So let me show you. So this is the water compartment. Now originally there was just a little hook on the door here. Um, it comes off pretty easily. You slide it up and it exposes a screw. And I think there was actually, yeah, one you can see the holes right there. There was one here as well. But we wanted to s store more things in here. So we kind of have our water hose in here, some filters, um, our um, winterizing hose, and some other items because we want to keep the things that we're going to be using over here, over here. So this uh, organizer is from Organize Obi. There's these little rigid snads, I think they're called, that adhere to the door. Now, we made the mistake of installing this without the things in the pockets and kind of stretched a little tight, which means it's kind of hard to get things in these pouches. And we originally um, put another screws in here to try to secure it a little more, but then we couldn't get things in the pockets. So if you're gonna do this, I would advise you giving yourself more slack or actually load them up first to determine where you're gonna put those snads. Um, we did add one screw in the middle just to give it a little more security because we've got, well, it's not too heavy of things in there. But, so that's kind of what we did there. Mod 27 is have ceramic tinting put on the cab windows on well we did an eyebrow on the windshield and then the two um, side cab windows um, if you've ever traveled a lot you know how much heat gain you can get going down the road when that sun's shining in so the ceramic coating is supposed to keep that heat gain down so we wanted to do that we had done our own film in in our camper van but that was because it was, I think it was during COVID and we were having, well, it was actually, well, it might have been during COVID and uh, we were struggling to find someone to install it for us, but we had it professionally done this time. Now, it's not easy to tell on these side windows that there's a coating on there, but you can see on the eyebrow that it's done well. However, we're going to have to do the eyebrow again because I don't know if you can see, we have a cracked windshield. And so we're going to have to get that replaced. Mod 28 is install a spice rack. We'll build it too. <laughs> um, I normally travel with about 15 different spices and herbs. So I knew I wanted some place to store all those and nice and handy. Again, we struggled with where to put it. So let me show you. Here's the kitchen again. I mean, yeah, it would probably, this is the nicest space to have to put a spice rack, but again, it's right over the stove. And it's probably not a good idea to have your spices within the heat there. So I actually chose to put it here. It was a really tight fit. Um, I should have brought some spices out here to show you, but each of these, hold, this holds four, this holds four of the jars I typically get. This holds three and this holds four. This handle kind of gets in the way. And then we had to make sure there was enough room to be able to tilt and get those jars out. So you'll notice this one has a shorter profile than the other ones. 
Now we chose to do it out of acrylic because we had such a tight space and this takes up less room than wood. Um, Keith had never worked with acrylic before, but a few YouTube videos and he was up to speed and he did some prototypes first. Um, we actually used the acrylic from our camper van. We had a fairing that had cracked. And so it was basically clear acrylic, but it had a, like a um, graphic put over it, but the graphic peeled right off. And so that's where we actually got the acrylic from was from our broken fairing. So that was kind of nice to be able to reuse those materials. Now I mentioned we cut this one down short. There's actually an issue with the one jar that goes right here because of this um, gets in the way of pulling it out. So I actually have to pull out the one next to it, move it over and pull that one out. Now, these are the size of spice jars I normally travel with. Um, as you can see, four fit in this one, but there's an issue. I mean, I can get this one out and I can get this one out, but I can't get this one out because of that's in the way. So I actually have to pull that out and move that over. Um, so I'll have to put my least used spice there. <laughs> my 29 is to install hooks to hang my net bag from. Now, as we travel, the way I found, the best way I found to haul fresh fruits and vegetables is to hang them in a bag. And this allows them to swing around, not bang into anything. And that way things like tomatoes don't end up split open and oozing out everywhere when you get to camp. Now the issue is finding a place to hang it where it doesn't bang into anything. And that's what we struggled with in the Echo. So we wanted some place that was convenient to get to. It was out of the way that you didn't run into it. Um, and then didn't bang into anything when you're traveling along and we actually couldn't find a place so we did a compromise we actually installed hooks Oops. underneath the microwave here i don't know if you can see that and this is great for when we're traveling down the road. It can swing around. It's not going to hit anything. And it's not in the way if we need to get back in the coach here for something. However, this is not convenient for when you want to cook, right? Because it's right in the way. So when we get to camp, the plan is to move the bag. We'll move the bag over here. So we installed two more hooks over here. And so this will be out of the way for cooking. I can still get to my spices. It's still not in the way of walking around, but this is not a good place for when traveling down the road because it would bang into the wall and smash our, our goods. So I don't like having to do extra steps when we set up camp and break camp, but I couldn't come up with a better location that would satisfy all the requirements. So this is what we have done. Now, the hooks we used, these are called ceiling hooks. You notice there's four screws in there and we wanted that because this is gonna hold quite a bit of weight. And so we didn't want something that's gonna, if it was only like one or two screws, we were concerned it would pull out of the cabinet. Um, we also made sure we used shorter screws than what came with it so we didn't poke through the cabinet. And um, it shouldn't twist or anything because there's four anchor points. So that's why we chose what we did. Mod 30 is install a shelf in the gear garage. So back here in the gear garage again, remember we have the bikes in here which pretty much take up the space down here and we still need a place to store our camp chairs and these are rather long they're too long to stand up in the gear garage here and so we originally tried using this jeep roof hammock which was kind of a soft-sided thing that we just hooked into the l track up here at top um, but 
sliding the chairs in and out was not easy. It would catch up on the fabric. And so we returned to our good old standby 8020 and ABS plastic. And we're able to connect that 8020 up into the L track. So let me show you what that looks from the side. So it extends pretty much the whole way apart across. So not only could we get our chairs up here, but we could also get our moon shade. Um, and there's actually probably a little room for something else, but we'll see. Um, and we're carrying our moon shade because we did not get the bat wing on this Echo. We would have liked it, but we didn't get it. Maybe we can install it at some later date. Now, when we had to make be careful here we kind of again designed this for the length of our chairs so it comes up short here so we can put tall items here if we need to and then we had to be careful of how far back we brought this to make sure we had room to load the bikes and get them in there without any issues mod 31 well it's not exactly a mod but it was a change um we removed the two cushions that go in between the beds in the back and replaced them with storage boxes to again give us some more storage. Now there was yeah, two big cushions that would basically turn this into one big queen size bed. We knew we wouldn't ever do that and we wanted the storage instead. So we found these boxes at the container store. They had lids on them. We can still set things on here if we need to, you know, like a cup or a laptop or something. Um, but then we have additional storage to put more clothing in. So we like that solution better. Mod 32 is we had a decal added to the back of the Echo. Um, it, so it's a little more subtle than what we had on the camper van. We had a big wrap on the camper van with this red-tailed hawk. Um, one of the pictures I took and um, our logo along with another logo, but um, Keith didn't want to be that loud. <laughs> so we compromised and I put a smaller logo and it fits on the door of the gear garage in the back. So here's the decal. We had it printed and installed by Fast Signs and they, they did a really nice job. So uh, we're a little more subtle this time. Mod 33 is we installed a metal screen across the hole that's it's kind of a slot behind the dinette bench here. Yeah, behind, let me get some of the stuff out of the way. This is our windshield, no, those are our side window shades. Um, and we store the lagoon table back here. But I don't know if you can see very well. I get some light down in there. So there was this slot of a hole here, and it's about this wide. And sometimes this part of the lagoon table would fall down in there. So we wanted something that would protect things from falling down in there, but also still keep ventilation because our inverter and in the year model we have, the inverter sits underneath this bench seat and it needs air ventilation. So we want to make sure when we keep the ventilation, but yet keep things from falling down in there. Mod 34 is to hang a collage of Red Tail Lodge 1, kind of a tribute to it, back in the bedroom. Here's the collage. So this is kind of a collage of some of our pictures of our camper van and all our stickers that we had from all the national park sites we went to. So it's just kind of make the place a little more home and cozy and feel like ours. Now we had this printed on acrylic by Shutterfly and it came with these aluminum barrel which hid the screws that it intended you to attached to the wall. Well, we didn't want to screw it into the wall. So this is actually put on with a command strip uh, Velcro, picture hanging Velcro. Um, but we had to actually 
modify this because there was holes in the acrylic. So we needed to modify those uh, aluminum barrels because it was intended to stick off out from the wall about an inch or so and we didn't want that. So this is like the little cap that screwed down into the barrel and we just took a hacksaw and cut the uh, stem of that so it wouldn't stick out the back and then super glued it into place. So it uh, covers up those holes. So we think it looks pretty nice. Mod 35 is to replace the DC power switch with one that locks. Now, people on the Echo Facebook group was reporting that um, they would accidentally bump the coach battery off switch and not notice it. So we just went ahead and replaced it with one that locks so you can't accidentally turn it off. You actually have to Can, now that all the lights went off, <laughs> it kind of works similar to the um, steps one. So you actually have to push this little tab over to either turn it off or on. And there's a nice little light indicating that it's on. So this was actually a mod that someone else on the Facebook group had posted. And these switches are from Spemco. Now it was these, um, you actually have to get it in from inside. We pulled the drawer out. You can pull the, the harness. There's like little um, blades that it sits into the wiring harness and you can pull that out and swap it out. The hard part was the Spemco switch comes with these little plastic tabs that stick up that actually have to be cut off and that was a little bit of an ordeal to get those off so we could get the wiring harness back on. Mod 36 is install a screen door latch. This was something we noticed when um, coming from a camper van that we can't believe that this I guess is a standard thing in RV world to have these screen doors with no handle on the inside to open them so you actually have to slide open the slider to activate the latch to open the door which kind of defeats the purpose of having a screen as you let all the bugs in. I mean you are going to be opening the door but it just seems like a pain especially when you're going in and out you're doing dinner outside and you're hauling things in and out. In a camper van we had a magnetic screen so we're used to it being very simple and easy so we again copied the Fit RV and bought a Camco screen door latch. You actually have to drill a hole in the screen door and it's basically a stick that you move and it and it activates the screen door handle. You could probably rig up something yourself but this thing is so cheap it was kind of like why bother just use this thing. So that's what we did. So this is the new little latch. It's basically a stick um, that you just pull up and the door opens. Here it is from the outside. As you can see, it's just a stick that you just activates the, the latch. Well, that was it. That was all, what was it, 36 of them? It's a lot of mods for a new rig, but... Hopefully we'll be happy with them and when we hit the road. So thanks for watching. If you want more details, especially if you want links to some of the items we purchased, look in the description below for our related blog posts. So go check that out. And if you haven't subscribed already, we'd really appreciate it. Ta-ta for now.